all six of these smartphones have released in 2021. Four of them are powered by Qualcomm's flagship Snapdragon 888 chipset. One of them house Qualcomm's latest CPU, the Snapdragon 870, and one of them use MediaTek's value for money Dimensity 1000 plus chip. And they will all be going head to head today in a high refresh rate, real life battery drain test battle. We have the largest battery all the way on the left hand side being the brand new Motorola Edge S and Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, both with 5,000 milliamp hour batteries. Then we have the Xiaomi Mi 11 with a 4,600 milliamp hour cell, the Oppo Reno 5 Pro with 4,350 milliamps, with the smallest cells all the way on the right hand side being the recently released Vivo Brothers, the X60 Pro Plus and iQ7 with 4,200 and 4,000 milliamp hour batteries respectively. All devices have been updated to their latest available software updates and all of them here are rocking Android 11. Today is all about testing the batteries when using their maximum available refresh rate options and that is 90 hertz on the Motorola and Oppo device and 120 hertz on the Samsung, Xiaomi, Vivo and iQ. The only devices here capable of hitting WQHD Plus is the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra and Xiaomi Mi 11 but I'm going to be bringing them back down to Full HD Plus to match the rest of the devices here. You might be able to purchase five Motorola Edge S's instead of one Galaxy S21 Ultra but can the Moto come out on top with the same battery capacity and how does it stack up to these very efficient 5 nanometer Snapdragon 888 powered smartphones and even the recently released Oppo running on a MediaTek Dimensity 1000 Plus. I'm extremely curious. This is Technic and without further ado, let's find out. It's probably a good idea to make sure that all phones are topped off at 100% using their respective chargers and yes they are all sitting at 100%. The Xiaomi does say that there is a battery issue but that's just because it wants us to enable automatic brightness but we're not going to do that since I manually set all the brightness levels using a Lux Lumis meter at the start of the test just to make sure that things are as even as possible. We're going to be using an emissivity level of 0.50 on my infrared heat gun here to test out temps during every interval period. They're all charging at the current point in time so you can't really compare them right now in terms of battery drain temperature but this is just their charging and I guess the Mi 11 is rightfully the hottest here with the Moto Edge S being the coolest but we'll get to a charging test another time. As of right now this is a battery drain test. We have that time interval at the top right hand corner. We have the current app at the bottom right hand corner and we have specifications on all devices here at the bottom underneath each device. After that first 30 minute interval in relation to the percentage above each phone below the branding of the phone we have 95% on the Edge S, 94 on the Samsung, 96 on the Xiaomi, 97 on the Oppo, 94 on the Vivo and 95 on the iQ with the Oppo leading the pack here even though it has a very small battery at just 4,350 milliamps compared to the two batteries on the left hand side which are both 5,000 milliamp hour cells. The Xiaomi Mi 11 didn't do too well with its QHD test at 60 hertz or full HD at 60 hertz so it's going to be really interesting to see what the Mi 11 can do here with 120 hertz and full HD. After one hour we have 92% on the Edge S, 90% on the Samsung, 92 matching the Edge S is the Xiaomi with a significantly smaller battery. 93% now falling behind is the Oppo Reno 5 Pro though still leading the pack here. 90% on the Vivo and 91% on the iQ7 which actually has a slightly bigger battery than its brother the X60 Pro. Reaching that 1 hour and 30 minute mark after Xiaomi was clearly the hottest over there in the last interval as well as its peak temperature. We have 87% on the Edge S, 84% on the Samsung, 85% on the Mi 11. Now the Samsung is below the Mi 11 and the Edge S is at the top of the pack even ahead of the Oppo Reno 5 Pro and we have 83% on the Vivo and 83% on the iQ. We're currently watching some live TV on Facebook about to head over to that two hour mark interval. Xiaomi still the hottest device here and the Motorola still the coolest. 82% after two hours on the Motorola Edge S, 81% on the S21 Ultra, neck and neck between those two now. The Oppo Reno 5 Pro still impressing me here, leading the pack with the Edge S at the same 82%, 79% on the Mi 11, 79% on the Vivo X60 Pro Plus and 79% on the iQ7. We're now currently with Twitter doing a looping video here getting to that two hour and 30 minute mark interval. Let's see which one is going to take the lead after this. 77% on the Edge S still with an edge over the S21 Ultra here with an extra 1% there. 76% on the Oppo now matching the Samsung but trailing the Motorola. 75% behind that is the Vivo X60 Pro Plus. Slightly falling behind now matching the Xiaomi is the iQ7 with 74% and of course 74% on the Mi 11. We're currently busy with Instagram doing some search videos over here and just to give you guys 
some knowledge, the Xiaomi Mi 11 was ridiculously hot. My last two battery tests of it were waiting for the efficient MIUI 12.5, which is unfortunately only coming in the third quarter of the year. So we're going to have to wait for that one. I think it's going to make a drastic improvement to the Mi 11. As of right now, I'm not quite sure this device is worth it running old software. Yes, we are on Android 11, but we're using old MIUI software, which means that it's not optimized for the nice beefy Snapdragon 888 chipset, which is run on five nanometer tech and is supposedly a lot more efficient than the seven nanometer process node technology chipsets, which is found within the Edge S running the Snapdragon 870 and the Oppo Reno 5 Pro here with the Dimensity 1000 Plus also on seven nanometer process node technology. So it is gonna be interesting to see how these seven nanometer chips compete with the five nanometer chips here and we're heading on to that four hour mark interval with the Xiaomi still being the hottest. The IQ was actually the coolest, the last interval and the coolest peak has been the Edge S. The Edge S after four hours and one minute, 65% here. Now the S21 Ultra is leading the pack with 67%. The Oppo has fallen quite a bit behind with 63%, but matching that is the Vivo X60 Pro Plus, 62% on the IQ7 and 58%. Still trailing the pack, the Mi 11, even though it doesn't have the smallest battery here, there's certain some issues with the Xiaomi Mi 11 and I have to say it must, it has to be the software at the current moment. If these issues are still there when MIUI 12.5 is released, then there's definitely something wrong with the hardware of this phone. We're currently busy with camera here. We're recording 4K 30fps video. Before this, we did selfie 1080p 30fps video. Now, many of these phones can actually record higher than that, but I keep it at this so that we can compare it with other smartphones that have been drained on my channel. Remember, you cannot compare these smartphones or any drain tests on my channel with other channels since we use different brightnesses. Some people use the volume up, I keep the volume muted. Some people use SIM cards, I use Wi-Fi. And of course, like I said, different brightness and apps as well. So don't compare this with any other channel, but you can compare this to all the other phones that have been drained on my channel. So make sure to head over to my channel after this and check out a couple of phones. Really interesting how long phones can actually last. I'm talking about you, Mr. Asus ROG Phone 3. Temperature too high on both Vivo devices here. Not long after that, the Mi 11 running 3D Mark Wildlife had the same issue in my last drain test really throttling this time around, overheating, killing the app as well on the Xiaomi. After five and a half hours, we now have 33% on the Edge S, which is just 1% behind the S21 Ultra. We have 21% on the Mi 11, still trailing the pack here, 27% on the Oppo, beating the two Vivo devices. Well, actually the one Vivo X60 Pro Plus, 28% on the IQ7 is now beating the Oppo. And we have overheating again, running GFX Benz on the Mi 11. And we had a low battery message twice now on the IQ7 and the battery is too low on the Mi 11. It just calls it a day here, five hours and 57 minutes. You be the judge if that is decent battery life. I usually say anything over six hours of battery life is decent, but this didn't quite make it there. And I would say it's good battery life for a 4,000 milliamp hour cell battery, but this is rocking a 4,600 milliamp hour battery, the biggest that we've seen on an actual flagship from Xiaomi before, and it's not doing a good job. Once again, that MIUI 12 software needs to be upgraded to 12.5 ASAP. 12.89 milliamp hour per minute reading rates of battery drain is really not good, guys. Reaching that six and a half hour mark, all of them are still alive here, that we have 2% left on both Vivo devices, 7% right in front of that is the Reno 5 Pro. Ahead of that is the Edge S with 15%, which is just 2% behind the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, which Vivo is gonna die first. It is the IQ7. Of course, it does have 200 milliamp hours smaller battery compared to its brother, the X60 Pro Plus, which does in turn cost quite a lot more money. The cheapest phone on the table here is the Motorola Edge S, which is around 250 euros starting here in China, which is ridiculously cheap, but the X60 Pro Plus more expensive than the IQ7 finished four minutes later than it. I guess not really a big difference there with the 200 milliamps between these two devices. And the IQ7 has a larger screen as well. Seven hours, we have 10% left on the Edge, 11% left on the S21 Ultra, and 1% left on the Reno. He doesn't want to give up here after seven hours. I'm proud of him. He made it to the seven hour mark and then just gave up at the seven hour and six mark. And, and that's not too bad. Seven hours and six minutes is brilliant for a phone with a tiny 4,350 milliamp hour battery. Especially 
especially when you compare it to the likes of the Mi 11 with a 4,600 milliamp hour battery and it got an extra hour, even more than an hour of juice of battery life out of the Oppo and it's an even slimmer device. I really like the Oppo Reno 5 Pro. Of course, it's not running the best chipset around, but it's a great device nonetheless. 2% left on the Edge S, 5% left on the S21 Ultra after seven and a half hours. This is pretty good battery life. I mean, they are both rocking really high refresh rate panels. 90 hertz on the Edge S says cheers to us now after seven hours and 37 minutes, which is really good battery life, but it does have a much larger battery than the Oppo Reno 5 Pro, so it didn't quite match that million power per minute reading and the S21 Ultra not far behind that with 7 hours and 42 minutes just 5 minutes longer lasting than the Edge S and they have the same battery capacity but the Samsung does have a larger screen than the Edge S it does use an AMOLED screen which is a lot more efficient than the IPS LCD display that you see on the Edge S the rest of the devices here are also all using AMOLED except for the Motorola 6th place here the Xiaomi Mi 11 5 hours and 57 minutes rocking a 120 hertz AMOLED display it does have the largest display here at 6.81 inches, so I'm not too surprised. Didn't do the best in my previous battery drain tests at 60 hertz. The iQ7 in fifth place, six hours and 34 minutes, an extra 30, 40 minutes of juice compared to the Xiaomi. Slightly cheaper device here, but a much smaller screen. The Vivo X60 Pro Plus, much more expensive than the previous two devices, six hours and 38 minutes. It does have quite a powerful camera though. Its battery is just subpar. The Oppo Reno 5 Pro, fantastic battery life for just a 4,350 milliamp hour cell seven hours and six minutes second place we have the 5000 milliamp hour champ the motorola edge s rocking 90 hertz and an lcd panel and a less efficient seven nanometer chipset seven hours and 37 minutes is still superb and in first place we have the s21 ultra with another massive battery matching the motorola 5000 milliamp hours seven hours and 42 minutes is great though it couldn't reach that nine hour mark that we saw when running at 60 hertz now comparing them all to the other smartphones on my channel which i've test it out which you can compare because I use the same apps the same brightness levels we have the Huawei Mate 40 Pro right at the top with over nine hours and then drop down quite a bit 11th place is the S21 Ultra its predecessor the S20 Ultra did it in nine minutes shorter time than the S21 Ultra even though it didn't have as of an efficient chipset the Motorola Edge S splitting those two buddies apart there right below that is the Oppo Reno 5 and then we have the Vivo X60 Pro hovering around the bottom with the iQ7 and slap bang at the bottom the Xiaomi Mi 11. Now the hottest device at the end of the test was the Mi 11 when it clocked out 66.5 degrees in Celsius but the Motorola Edge S hit the hottest peak at 67.7 degrees in Celsius both of these phones got ridiculously hot the biggest difference between them though is that the Xiaomi closed its app trying to prevent damage to the battery when it got too hot, where the Motorola Edge S just powered through, which I have to give to it, you know, thumbs up for that one, brother, but you can really damage your battery if you keep it running at such a hot temp. The coolest phone here was the S21 Ultra. The best milliamp hour permanent reading we had was on the iQ7 with 10.15, and the worst on the Xiaomi with 12.89. The iQ didn't win the battle over here, but it definitely got the best milliamp hour permanent reading since it has a thousand milliamp hours less battery capacity compared to the Samsung and it finished just an hour before that meaning that if they all had the same size battery of 5000 milliamps the IQ would place first with 8 hours and 13 minutes then second would be the Oppo third would be the Vivo fourth would now be the Samsung fifth the Motorola and sixth would remain the Xiaomi Mi 11 due to its terrible 12.89 milliamp hour per minute reading I hope that you guys found this test interesting I definitely enjoyed making it the subs of the channel would be absolutely incredible. This is Tech Nick and I'll see you in the next one.